Well, we all have a superego. Uh, it's one of three parts of our psyche that Freud identified. Uh, you can see in the picture there, the id, which is basically your basic drives, uh, survival, your desire for sex, food, whatever. Those basic immediate drives, that's the id. Um, the ego is sort of like a controller, but the superego is the thing I'm going to talk about because, as Freud said, it is the uniquely cruel thing. And in fact, most of the suffering that a lot of people have is due to their superego. Superego is really a part of our mind that um, has been programmed by the outside world. Uh, maybe your parents to a large extent. Uh, maybe society as well, uh, peers maybe, teachers, anybody who's had a, a, a reasonable amount of influence over you. Uh, we interject these things, that's the word that is used, and we can't help it, uh, particularly when we're young. So the superego is full of should and shouldn't. You should be a good boy, you should be loving, you should be kind, you should be grateful, you should be humble. You know, the endless things that you might get from your parents or from society or from religion. I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so, most of us have a very highly programmed super ego. And it's sat there as a kind of judge watching us. Well, you have been... Um, lazy, you have been uh, ignorant or, you know, whatever. It's usually negative stuff. It's not always negative stuff, but very often it is. It's full of beliefs about yourself. Oh, I'm useless. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I... And again, all of that programming comes from typically parents or siblings or uh, society at large or, you know, wherever. Um, the problem with the superego is that it, it doesn't really belong to us. It's not, it's like a parasite that's sat in there. And it's sat there judging what we do all the time. And it definitely has, or usually anyway, it has a, a very dim view of our id, our basic drives and instincts. Because the id always wants things here and now. I want food now, I want sex now, I want power now, I want money now. Nothing wrong with that, it's a basic human drive, but the superego sits there judging it all. Now, um, religion and so-called spiritual traditions uh, tend to make this situation far worse, because we're told that we should be all these nice things that religious people tell us, loving, kind, grateful, humble, all those kind of things. And uh, we very often don't feel like that. So, you know, who's going to win out this parasite that we have within us called the superego that may well be very, very highly conditioned by uh, religious and spiritual beliefs or the basic drive, which is really the real part of us. We're animals in the main anyway, animals with a reasoning consciousness. So what's going to win out? Well, very often, unfortunately, for many people, the super ego wins out because it's a very powerful thing. You see, when you're a kid and your father, you know, maybe is telling you that you're useless, you will interject that, you'll, you'll swallow it because you don't fight against it, you know, if you're just four or five years old and your father's saying negative things to you, you're not going to turn around and say, no, I'm not, you know, shut up. You're not going to do that because your mother and father, when you're very young, are your lifeline. Uh, you believe they're gods, you believe that they can deliver everything you want. You're not going to deliberately alienate them by contradicting them. So you swallow this stuff. You're useless. And then when you grow up, you've got your superego there telling you that you're useless. So it's, as Freud said, the uniquely cruel thing. It sits in there judging you all the time. And many, many people are walking around in a state of unhappiness because their superego, this parasite, 
is inside them judging everything they do. There are ways to deal with it. Um, very often people need help, but um, what we can do at least is become a little bit conscious of how we feel. So maybe in a situation where um, some initiative is required from us or whatever, and we think to ourselves, well, I can't do that. It's, you, know, you, you just need to observe that. Don't try and change it. Changing is not the name of the game in all of this. You just observe it and you try and understand it. Well, where did I get that belief from that I can't do that? And eventually, and this is not a short-term thing, it's not a weekend workshop, eventually you might come t to understand that that was the influence of you know, your father, say, or your mother, or one of your siblings, a bigger brother or sister or something. Because you know, when, we're, when we're doing that kind of thing, uh, very often we're transferring our power. So we're saying that, oh, well, this person over here can do all this stuff, but I can't. Well, I'll let that person do it. Uh, that person can have the power. I'm just a kind of slave. So you need to understand where this belief comes from, that other people are more powerful than you. So dealing with the superego isn't, um, you know, as I say, a weekend workshop thing. It's something you need to deal with throughout your life because by the time you're I don't know probably seven I mean they do say that by the time a, a kid is seven it's pretty much programmed so by the time you're seven you are carrying a lot of this baggage around and then you pick more up from society uh, so all these beliefs of what you can do and what you can't do and what you should do and what you shouldn't do and what you are and what you are not all this stuff has come from outside and it needs to be deprogrammed, deconstructed. And it's a shame, isn't it, that we get largely uh, programmed by the time we're about seven, and then it can take decades to deprogram it. The alternative, of course, is to live your life with this programming in a state of misery, because this, you know, as you can see on the picture, this fierce nurse is sat there accusing you all the time and that will cause you pain so um, there is a choice you either don't bother with deprogramming your superego and live the life of uh, a slave really with the superego being the master telling you what you can do and what you can't do and so on or you start to become aware of it and you start to deprogram it and uh, that's not an easy thing. The superego will rebel. It'll tell you what you that you shouldn't be doing that. But any shoulds and shouldn'ts belong to the superego. So listen to your shoulds and your shouldn'ts because they give the game away. <laughs>